In this video on c -sharp Basics, let's take a closer look at parameters. So parameters are variables which hold values passed into the method by the caller. Parameters act just like variables do with pre-assigned values in the method scope. And those values are passed onto the method by the caller. So when the caller actually tries to call the method, the, the caller actually needs to pass on what those values should be in those parameters. Parameters must have some sort of data type and they must also have a name. And that's again, because they act just like variables do. And finally, parameters can be declared as optional by assigning a default value. Otherwise, they are required parameters. So let's take a look at some code and see this a little bit more uh, in depth. So here inside my my class class, and I'm just going to go ahead and continue on inside this declaring a function folder. We already have declared these two parameters int value one and int value two. And since we don't have any assigned value to them initially, they are required. So whenever the caller tries to call this method add to integers, it must pass on a value for value one and it must pass on a value for value two. And I keep using this term caller. I'm gonna actually show you what a caller looks like. So I'm gonna create yet another method. I'm gonna call this a public method and I'm going to use the return type void. And the return data type of void means there is no requirement back, that there's no value that's going to be returned back to the caller, okay? So I'm creating a new method here. It's not going to pass any data back to whoever is calling it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and call this uh, do math. And for parameters, I'm just gonna leave it empty. So there aren't any parameters for this do math method. But inside of my do math method now, I'm going to call add two integers. And you'll see that as soon as I hit the parentheses here, you can see with the IntelliSense, it asks uh, for int value one and int value two. So it's saying you must pass in some sort of value for value one. So I could do two and I could do uh, three, right? So those are my two values that I want to pass in. Now the value that is in the first spot here is two and that would get placed into this value one variable or value one parameter. Then this value of three would be passed into this value two parameter. And then I could use those values as inside of the scope of my method. So I could simply say uh, value one plus value two. So we need to do something with this value one plus value two. We need to actually put this inside of some other variable. I'm gonna declare another variable of a type int and I'm gonna call it sum. And now we can assign to sum the, uh, the return result of value one plus value two. So now int sum equals value one plus value two. And now we can use the return keyword to return some sort of value back to the caller. That's the caller here, add two integers up here inside of our do math method. So we have to return back to wherever this do math method asked for two uh, add two integers. It wants some sort of value in return. The value that it expects back is of a type called int. And if I hover the mouse over the add two integers caller here, you can even see the very first part of the IntelliSense in kind of blue, and I don't know if you can see this, it's of a data type int. So it's expecting a return type of int from this add two integers method. So in my return statement here, I need to return a data type of int. And that data type of int happens to coincide with this sum variable that I declared right here. So we can return sum and that's it. We have now successfully set our parameters here, value one and value two, and we've added them together and put them inside of another variable called sum. And we're returning that value of sum back to the caller, which is right here, this add two integers.
Now, what do you suppose we want to do with this add to integers method? Well, we probably want to write the results back to the console window. So what we'll do is we'll do console dot write line. And now we can put inside of the parentheses of the right line, we can pass on add to integers two and three. And that's because this add to integers method is going to return back a data type of int and the right line method on the console class, one of the parameters that the right line method can use is this int value. So we can see as we hold the mouse over this right line method in the IntelliSense, we see void console dot right line int value. So right line can actually accept a parameter of a data type of int. And since add to integers returns a data type of int, we can use the add to integers method as the parameter for this right line method on the console class. So we've actually been using a method and passing in a parameter this whole time. We've been using this console.writeline and passing in you know, values that come from math equations and relation operators and all sorts of stuff. We've been using this right line method and passing in parameters this whole time. And you guys probably didn't even realize it. So there you go. That is a, a wonderful thing. I'm gonna go ahead and do console.readline. And you'll notice that console.readline does not expect any parameters. That's why it is parameterless. There's no arguments being passed into it inside the parentheses. And if I hover the mouse over the read line, you can see that there's no request for any values to be passed into it, like we do when we hover the mouse over the right line. Okay, so to make a, a parameter optional, you just simply have to assign some sort of initial value. So if I said that there's a default value of zero to this value two, that would mean that if I just decided not to include this value of three here, that's perfectly fine. It's going to use the value of zero instead. So when this caller add to integers calls the add to integers method, it's gonna pass in the first value of two into the variable value one. And then the parameter value two would have this default value of zero. So you would get a math operation of two plus zero and that gets assigned to the sum variable and then the sum variable returns back to the caller. So that's how you can use a default value to say that this is actually an optional, uh, an optional parameter. And if I take this off, you'll see that now the caller is going to have this red squiggly line because it expects that that second value to be passed into it. Now, if you decided to try to make this two uh, into the value two instead by saying value one is actually optional parameter, you're going to run into a problem. And that is that optional parameters must be declared after any required parameters. And there's this little red squiggly line here underneath the second parenthesis. If I hover the mouse over that, you can see optional parameters must appear after all required parameters. 